Welcome back, everyone. When I started my MBA program at Stanford, I wasn't sure what job I can get after I graduate. I have some rough ideas of where I wanted to be. For example, I was thinking maybe I want to become an education technology entrepreneur, or maybe I want to become a product manager. But other than that, there wasn't much research or diligence I've done into the chance of me landing these jobs. Luckily, all the top MBA programs disclose exactly where the MBA graduates ends up working at from an industry breakdown perspective, and also they disclose how much money do they get paid immediately after they graduate. So today I've done a little bit of homework for you all so that we can just walk through these data in a very short 10 minutes, and hopefully that can be helpful for you to decide what jobs you wanted to pivot into after you graduate from your MBA program. So in this video, I'm going to cover primarily three questions. Question number one, what are the profiles of incoming MBA students? Number two, what are some popular jobs do MBA graduates usually get? And number three, how much do MBAs get paid upon graduation? If you like what I'm talking about here, like and subscribe. So in general, the MBA incoming class are quite diverse, but not really. They're kind of diverse because you could find friends coming from any industry you want. Because I was always fascinated by those stories told by my classmates who were former Navy SEALs or my roommate who came from Saudi Arabia, who come from the oil and gas industry, who were totally different from the finance backgrounds or the people that I know in the past. And also there are a lot of people who come from some traditional industries. Obviously, there's a lot of people from tech and finance and consulting as well. So I would say that overall, it's a quite diverse student body. But if you really look at the data, it's quite interesting to see that the student body are highly concentrated. Close to 60% of the incoming class come from finance, consulting, and tech combined. So sometimes you feel the MBA program wanted to position themselves as United Nations, but a more accurate analogy is the permanent member of the United Nations Security Council because there are just like so few of those industries that MBA usually come from or go to. And here is a more detailed view by comparing all three schools side by side. As expected, among all the incoming MBAs, Stanford has a higher concentration in tech and entrepreneurship, while Wharton has a higher concentration in professional services, for example, finance and consulting. But in general, GSB and HBS has a more diverse student body than Wharton. In addition to industry breakdown, about one third of the incoming class are international students. Even though GSB reported that 47% of the class has an international background, what really counts is only about one third after including dual citizenships. So what does that mean for international students like me? I would say that for those top MBA programs, I do feel the program is a bit too US centric. From an academic perspective, most of the MBA cases are about US companies versus international companies. And also from a social life perspective, when you go to those events, you do feel that the overall vibe is quite US centric because you don't have enough international students to create a truly global culture. So you kind of have to learn how to mingle with US students and also learn their cultural dynamics. So now let's move on to look at the graduating class profile of class 2021 from the top three MBA programs. So looking at their employment data, first things first, as compared to 59% of incoming class from finance, consulting, and tech, I'll call them the top three industries, as high as 79%, almost 80% of MBA graduates decided to find jobs in these top three industries. So let's break the data down by industry to see where the net new 20% are coming from. So first of all, 7% come from finance, which increased from 27% to 34%. 3% come from consulting, which is a much smaller percentage compared to finance. And lastly, as much as 10% are coming from tech, tech increased from 12% to 22%. I guess also come from this background because I have a finance background and ended up pivoting into tech, which contributed to the net 10% increase in tech. So if you look at the top three schools side by side, it's interesting that the percentage of students going to finance are not too different among the top three programs. But what are students particularly like consulting or GSB is more into tech. So given that finance is really the most popular jobs among all the MBA graduates, and also I come from a finance background, so let's take this opportunity to break it down into different types of financial jobs from investment banking to private equity, venture capital, investment management, etc, etc. So the most popular job within finance is 
private equity. Of course, there is still a pretty high percentage of people pursuing other finance jobs other than private equity. But I would say that private equity has a really nice mix of high pay, decent work-life balance, and sufficient intellectual stimulation that keeps the ranking very, very high among all the MBA students. Compared to private equity, I came from investment banking. Investment banking is quite different because it's a sell-side job. Sell-side meaning that you're trying to sell a product to a client. So it has a very high focus on client serving. So you usually have less control over your schedules and you do get decent pay, but the work-life balance is pretty bad and sometimes you do feel that intellectual stimulation is not enough. Compared to private equity, venture capital and investment management are also quite popular, but just given that there are fewer openings from these two industries, it's much harder for people to recruit for these two roles, and as a result, it's also more competitive to find a venture capital or investment management jobs. What's also interesting is that GSB has the highest percentage of students going into venture capital because it's proximity to Silicon Valley, I guess, while Warden has the highest percentage of students going to investment banking. Later, you will see that Warden do have a much higher percentage of students going to professional services in general, including investment banking and consulting. If you're not interested in finance and consulting, among all the operating roles, the most popular options are business operations, strategy and planning, which is about 10 to 15% of the graduating class for GSB and HBS, wouldn't didn't disclose its data. After business operation and strategy and planning, the next popular operating role is product management. Yay, we won. So it's about 8% of the graduating class that goes into product management, followed by general leadership and general management roles. There are also some like rotation programs that are customized for MBA graduates, which is another 8% of the graduating class. So reading these employment reports, I also found another very interesting insight is that I thought that other business operating roles, for example, marketing, sales, business development, would be also popular roles for MBAs, but it turns out that there are not as much. So I guess that if you're interested in these roles, you might become a minority in your class. So besides job functions, I also saw some very interesting insights about the location of the MBA graduates' employers. So the biggest takeaway here is the physical location of the MBA program has a really high correlation with where its MBA graduates choose to work in the end. So one really crazy data is as high as 90% of the MBA graduates choose to work in the US after they graduate as compared to going back to their home country or working internationally. Similarly, there is a specific correlation between the school location and exactly where in the US students work in the end. So West Coast schools like Stanford has 56% of graduates working on the West Coast, while East Coast schools like HBS and Warden have close to 50% of graduates working in the Northeast. So if you're still deciding which school you want to apply for or which school you want to choose, you probably want to put a much higher emphasis on the physical locations given the data that we show you just now. Now let's go into the third question. How much do MBA get paid after they graduate? So today I'm going to cover the top three MBA programs, Stanford GSB and HBS, because Warden didn't disclose the full total compensation data. So I'm going to break down the total comps by base salary, performance bonus, and sign-on bonus for these two schools. In general, the medium comps for class of 2021 from these two schools were 226k for GSB and 218k for HBS. The base salary was roughly around 150k for both schools with a performance bonus of close to 40k and a sign-on bonus of another 30k. As I mentioned earlier, finance is the clear winner of different type of jobs MBA can choose from. I guess the biggest reason is you get paid a lot. Let's look at how much. So the median total cost for finance was about 304k for GSB and 325k for HBS, which is about 50% more than the median average of the entire MBA class. The base salary was between 150 to 170k with a performance bonus between 100 to 135k and a sign-on bonus between 30 to 40k. If you have watched my previous videos, you know that I made the tough decision to leave finance to enter into an operating role as a product manager. But looking back at how much money I made in the past, that was always a really good thing from my previous life. So let's look at consulting, which is also a very popular job for MBA graduates 
which is also not a very bad choice from a compensation perspective. The median comps for consulting was about 228k for GSB and 225k for HBS. So I guess these consulting firms already figured out their range among themselves, so the compensation is pretty close across different schools or across different students. So the base salary was 165k, very high base salary. So if you're like really desperate to paying your debt off, I guess like probably consulting is also another good choice with a performance bonus of 30k and a sign up bonus of another 30k. Last but not least, let's look at tech jobs, which is also my favorite. The median tech job has 150k for base salary, 20k for performance bonus, and 25k for sign on bonus. This adds up to a total compensation of 195k. And because I'm a product manager, I desperately want to show you how much do product managers get paid. So product management jobs has a slightly higher total comps compared to all the other tech jobs, with the base salaries of slightly higher 158k, and 14k for performance bonus and 33k for sign up bonus so the total comps for product management is about 205k to summarize what jobs can mba graduates get first things first close to 80 percent of mbas choose to work in the top three industries finance consulting and tech so if you're aiming for these three industries i think mba is definitely a good choice for you however if you're looking for other industries that are not these top three industries MBA might still make sense for you, but you wanted to be prepared to be surrounded by students who have a slightly different career goal from you. Secondly, the location of the school is highly correlated to where MBAs work after graduation. It might be self-selected instead of causation, but it's always more convenient to pick a school that's closer to your future employers. Lastly, a median MBA will make about 220k based on 2021 employment data. So if your current compensation is much lower, going to an MBA can be a decent financial investment for you. That's all for today. Have a good one.